Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 385. Welcome to this opening teaching of our Week and in the Word. The theme is Searching the Scriptures, and this is my welcoming and opening teaching that I did on that Friday evening. That's like a clarion call to me, search the scriptures. Let's see what the scriptures have to say. Let's go to Acts chapter two. Part of the theme verse for the weekend. I have three theme verses. I don't know if that's cheating or not, but but I did it. And in verse 46, it says, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house. Man, in this house, we did break some bread here today. And did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, singleness of purpose. Our purpose is to glorify God, his son and his wonderful word. In 47, it says, praise God and having favor. And the word favor sometimes is translated grace. Favor, you know, I understand the word favor because, uh, well, has anyone ever seen the teacher's favorite pet? And they're always a little bit favored. So we know when someone else is being favored, right? But God favors us, all of us, because we're sons and daughters of God. We have Holy Spirit. We are favored, but it says here that we we have favor. We share that favor with all the people. How many other people? Everybody? What about? It says everybody, okay. All the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. You know, when we go out and we talk to people or anything we do to help people with the things of God, God's the one that adds to the church. We never have to worry or think about that part of it. Matter of fact, it's foolish to do that. Just do what God has us to do. And the Lord will add to the church daily. We were added to the church. And some of us got there by mistake. Somebody picked us up and we were there. A guy came into a restaurant one day and said to me, can I sit down? I said, sure, have a seat. And he sat down. Well, first he asked me how I was doing and stuff like that. And I said, well, you know, it could be better. And he goes, you know that Jesus Christ came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I said, no, no one (laughs) never heard that. I went to church for a long time, Catholic church. I just knew that that guy up there on the cross was there because of me. So just happened, just started hearing the word and and learning it and growing with it and just thinking to myself, how privileged can I be that I found these people who really knew the word or these people, oh yeah, God added to the church. God put us together. And it changed my life, obviously, because I just wanted to keep growing and learning with God. It's wonderful. In Acts chapter 17, in in verse 2, it says, Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. What did Paul use to teach people? He used the scriptures. He didn't give them his opinion. He didn't say, well, I think this means this. 
He did it out of the scriptures. Verse 3, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ, is the very Christ. I'm teaching you about Christ, is what he's saying. And some of them believe and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. In other words, quite a few people listened to Paul and, and Silas. They, they were into it. Verse 5 says, But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, and took unto them certain lewd fellows of the basest sort, and gathered a company, and set up the, the city in an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren into the, unto the rulers of the city, saying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Man, they didn't turn the world upside down. They turned it right side. <laughs> they turned it so that it worked. They... They turned it so that the more abundant life was available. Grace, God's grace was available to people. And one of the things I want you to see here is while this is going on, while a, a, all kinds of Greeks and a few women, not just a few, I guess, believed. And with those people, you know what was happening to them? Signs, miracles, and wonders. Deliverance. But at the same time, they got these rude guys of a base of sort. That always happens with the movement of God's word. There will always be those people that will rack and ruin and hurt people. But we don't quench from that. Why? Because God still works. People are getting blessed, getting born again, getting delivered, signs, miracles, and wonders. Those things always happen when the word's being taught. Always happen. No matter how much unbelief there's around. We, we don't even look at that unbelief. We, we just wipe the dust off our feet and move on. We're going to go someplace where people want to hear what we have to say. That was what's going on. And verse 7 says, And Jason, whom received, and these do all contrary to the degrees of Caesar. Who cares what Caesar has to say? But anyhow, saying that there is another king, one Jesus, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who had come in hither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Why did they go to the synagogue of the Jews? They wanted to teach the word. Well, what about all the trouble that happened? They didn't look at the trouble. They looked at the people that were believing. They were looking at the signs, miracles, and wonders. That's what happens. And then verse 11 is the theme, one of the themes of the weekend. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures once in a while. Well, when you got time, you know, we got one. Daily, they made sure that they had their heads in the word. They searched the scriptures. When I read God's word, there's so much talk about searching the scriptures. Do you, you know how many times the word research is used in the Bible? Zip. We search the scriptures. That's what I've learned. We search the scriptures. 
I don't care what anyone says about the scriptures as much as I want to know what the scriptures say. Because that's what saves people. That's what helps people. You know, another thing, if you read Thessalonians, Thessalonian was a model church. It was, it was a model church. And these people in Berea were more noble than that model church. Why? Because they searched the scriptures. They searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. Searching the scriptures is vitally important to us, to all believers. What I want to know what the word said. Do you know that we are constantly bombarded by endless suggestions, distractions, and things to keep us away from what's really important and what really matters? The adversary is really good at what he does. We need to be on guard to make sure that we know what the word says, speak what the word says, and believe it. That's our job, to believe it, to know what it says, and to believe it. In many fields of endeavor, they, the people that are in those fields, they need to be recertified occasionally, like teachers and, and uh, many other things. Teachers and real estate people have to be recertified and others. There's probably many. What about people who search the scriptures? What about people who teach the word? They need to recertify themselves because there's no one doing it for them we they recertify themselves by looking at the word making sure that it's accurate they need to recertify themselves on foundational truths on every subject so they can accurately help people see our job is to help people we want to accurately help people the greatest thing that I was ever taught was the keys and principles needed to understand the Bible when it's accurately read. When we read it, we are to read it accurately. People have said to me at times, when they know that I like to teach people how to read the Bible, they say, and I start telling them about, we let the word speak for itself. And they say, oh, so you believe the word of God literally. I say, no, I believe the word of God accurately. There's a difference. And you know what the difference is. The greatest thing I ever learned was those keys and principles so that I could know how to rightly divide the word of God. The scriptures, the word of God, is the revealed word and will of God, period, accurately read. And we learn these things. We know what they are. I wrote this thing down, and, and all of us have heard pieces or parts of it or the whole thing. I don't know. To accurately understand the Bible as it is written in Scripture, we need to read carefully what the scriptures say, using the laws of grammar in the verse, in the context, pay, paying attention to the words used in the scriptures, the figures of speech and the customs of the lands and times when the Bible was written. We may also need to read other passages dealing with the same word, the same subject, or the same event in order to understand it better. We should look very closely to see if the scriptures we are comparing are identical or similar. Some may be similar in many areas, but not all. If there is a difference, they are similar and not identical. 
if they do not contradict, even if some things may be added or subtracted, we can consider them identical and use scripture buildup to get a more complete understanding. We need to watch carefully to whom the passage is written and of whom it is true. That means closely reading the scriptures. If there's an apparent discrepancy and we understand what is written, we may need to consider other texts and translations. In early 2000s, a friend of mine reminded me of what my father in the word taught. That is, if we put all our other reading material away and read nothing but the Bible, my neighbors wouldn't recognize me. I wouldn't even recognize myself. So I put away all my reading studies, teaching tapes, and read nothing but the scriptures for three months. Has anyone ever done that? But it, And just read the scriptures for three months. And after I did that, I saw the benefit to my life. I read whole contexts, not just pulling verses out. I really started to understand the Bible more than I ever did before, just by reading the scriptures. And you know what? That's what Jesus said we're to do. That's what Paul did, reading the scriptures. So I saw the importance of that. And that is what led me to doing much of the stuff that I have done, like teaching others how to read the Bible for themselves. My book on how to read the Bible for understanding the power. Showing the keys and principles of how the Bible interprets itself and teaching other foundational things that would help them to understand the Bible. I did that because I wanted people to get back to the word. I wanted people to start reading the scriptures and learning what that wonderful word of God is. Let's look at uh, some of the scriptures and let's read them. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world or this age, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Wow. Two verses packed. Packed. We're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, not a dead one, not even a, a weak one. You know, we're serving God. And it says, don't be conformed to this world. Well, this world wants to conform you. And it wants to do it really aggressively. I mean, there's plenty of advertisement, plenty of distractions, plenty of things to get you from into this world, get you to into the things that they think is what you ought to spend your time on. But this renewed mind involves reading and studying the scriptures, God's revealed word and will. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, or is God breathed? All scripture. It doesn't say a little here and a little there. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, which is right believing and teaching for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We want to be right with God. So we go to the scriptures to, to line up our lives, our actions, things that we do with the word of God. 
because we want to renew our minds. Second Peter 1, 20 and 21. These are all foundational scriptures, but we need to keep them in mind. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Well, we know what that means. We can all have our own private. No, no, it doesn't mean that. It has no private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, God. You know what I mean? God's the author. God's the author of his word. And it says it didn't come by the will of man. Well, that's exactly what most people believe. It came by the will of man. They wrote this down and out of the best of their ability. And they might have been good men, but they're still men. And we know all men are liars. And so they don't trust the word of God. The word of God is not trusted. That you know why it's not trusted? They look at men. They look at the men who are political leaders, religious leaders, and they they've been wrong. They made bad mistakes. And they go, "Well, how can we trust these men that wrote this book? Look at all the mistakes throughout history that they've made." So they don't really see, hey, it wasn't written by men, but by holy men as they were moved by the Spirit of God. It's God's word. And we've got to point that out to them. And we got to do that because they automatically think, I don't trust. I don't, they don't trust anybody. They don't trust the organization. They don't trust the schools. They don't trust the government. They don't trust where they work. They can get fired any minute. They don't trust. People are just fearful of their lives yes. every day. I know this a little bit of this because when I drive Uber, I hear it. People are in so much despair that it's unbelievable. Someone needs to throw them an anchor or a lifeline. The problem became not not in the old time by the will of men by holy men spake as they were moved by the holy spirit second timothy 2 15 says study fadazo use an effort and being diligent with a brevity of time to show thyself approved unto god who do you show yourself approved unto god, god. you do it yourself every believer has a responsibility to show themselves approved unto God. And they have to be taught how to read the Bible. They have to ta be taught how it works. They have to be taught so that they can be workmen. So they can rightly divide the word and they can be proud of their work. They can show you from the scriptures what the scriptures say. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And some translations or some versions say, accurately handling the word of truth. And that's what I think we do. We accurately handle the word of truth with no preconceived ideas go to uh first timothy chapter two i'm going to read three through six for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior who will have all men to be saved you know that says all men god's will is that all men would be saved and come unto an accurate knowledge of the truth. So when we're out there and we see certain people, we can dismiss them right away because they're undesirable. They, they don't really live a good life. No, no, no. Everybody has a right to hear the word of God. 
everyone. And it's so easy to say, well, you know, the guy's been out there begging all week. Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't have time to talk to him. Or you could say, he really needs the word. He really needs it. God would want all people to be saved. You know what that gives us? It gives us something to do. You know, what am I going to do today? You know, I don't know what to do today. Well, there's something to do. Well, there's something we could do. In 2 Timothy in uh, 3, 7, it says, we don't want to be these guys I'm going to read to you about. It says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We don't want to be the ones that are ever learning and never coming to a knowledge of the truth. We want to rightly divide that wonderful word of God. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, and this is Paul talking, this was the first church epistle written. But he's saying, you heard the word from us and you received it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that do what? Believe. Believe. You know, when it comes to God's word, we need to know it. We have to accurately know it and understand it, but that's not enough. That gets you nothing if you don't believe it. And if you believe it, you will act upon it. And believing is an action word. There's action that goes along with it. Like, we know there's something we can do. We just read it. And we need to believe it. And once again, it's not the man who, it's not the word of men they got that word they heard it from paul and titus and stuff and they said yeah i'm going to believe this as it's god's word when we teach god's word we can say this is god's word i used to love to witness with my bible because i could always point to things and say see it says this i don't know what you do with your phone I got one, too. I got lots of Bible on my phone, too. But, I mean, but this really points it to them. They see it. And they go, really? And if someone, they used to be, they used to say, oh, that's just foolishness to me. And I go, I know. See, it says right here, you're going to think it's foolish. I know you think that, but God told me. Get ready in his word. I, I used to do that, all, especially when I was a while. I'd be talking to people, and they'd go, Oh, yeah, that's just foolish. I know, I know you think that. See, it says so. I just show it to them right away. We always say, or I always say, I says, it's because of the word that I know and believe. But it's not enough just to know it. We have to believe it. And if we'll believe it, we will do it. We'll act upon the word. And it will really help people. Our main goal, I guess, in life is to help people. To really help people. And you help people by giving them the word. Go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 2. Paul really taught people by using the scripture. Jesus Christ taught people by using the scriptures. On the road to Emmaus, he opened up. That's what it was in boys' life? No. Okay. Uh, the scriptures. This is the book I carry around with me. And this is what I show them. In verse 22, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. See that? Mm -hmm. What was it that the disciples remembered? The scriptures. 
And that Jesus said, this is what you got to remember. You know, sometimes people say things like, well, it's the money you got to watch out for. I say, it's the scriptures. The scriptures. We need to say and speak the scriptures. God can speak in behalf of himself better than any man could speak for him. I've seen books bigger and thicker than the Bible to explain God. And you have too. I suggest reading the scriptures. I really do. That's what we're going to do here this weekend. We're going to read the scriptures. And you know why we read the scriptures? Why we're the ones that are going to read it and then act upon it is because we are special. We have Holy Spirit. We're sons of God with all power. There used to be that saying, what, Sogwalk? Does anyone know what that means? Sons of God with all power. That's who we are. And you know why? when we're like that? Every day. And we can act that way every day. And we get that knowledge from the scriptures. In the next episode, we'll play Bob Swan's teaching, Exercise Unto Godliness. Let's hit the gym. In the meantime, you can look over the show notes below. I have the latest announcements at the beginning of the show notes. You can see the upcoming events, and there are links to all the podcast, all my website teachings, and how to link into the Zoom fellowships.